So I wanted a coherent body of timeless pieces. All deep cuts, really. I wasn't really too worried about the singles. Everyone wants singles now. It's like fucking gimme, 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 swipe, swipe, swipe. But I just wanted a body of work that will stand out to the people that matter. I think it's a ridiculous. I think it's 10% of people listen to albums now. 10%, that's it. Um, but I'm happy to market myself for the 10%, man. First track, Waste of Air. You can horse me and die for deals for putting this a wagon wheel. That was actually on two other beats before it was on that one. Um, it was on a beat by Dead TBSA from my 2016 project, Untitled EP. It was going to be on there, but it never did. Then it was on another one of Roscoe's beats called Dr. Snazzle Pop, I think it's called. And that didn't happen in the end. So in the end, it was, uh, yeah, the one that I made. Um, I, I, I reached out, there's a guy called Nathan Samevi. Samevi, sorry if I've pronounced your surname wrong. Um, he played the bass and guitar on that. So what I'm doing on, uh, on Waste of Out, I am talking to a less productive me. Topic of discussion, nothing worth discussing. It's the odd little spill of how you used to be something. So yeah, it's basically me talking to a to a less productive me, even though I'm saying you. Do you know what I hate in songs like saying you do this, you do that, you are this, you are that. I just feel like one of them like fucking judgy like fucking pricks, like do you know what I mean? Um so even though I'm saying you and this, it's kind of I'm I'm, I'm talking to myself a lot of the time. But that's enough optimism for your negative memory. I've got some guy, Amir Brandon, his name is. He put, he put the hook on it, sung that for me. And I got Bjork, the sick little Bjork bit on the outro. So Bjork, she rounded the track off nicely, talking uh, about the TV ruining your brain. All that's on TV, it just goes directly into your brain and you stop judging if it's right or not. So you just swallow and swallow. But this track was the track that kind of spawned um, the flow for the rest of the album, was spawned from this track. It, um, yeah, it kind of drove me into the direction that, uh, yeah, that I went. A Lazy Way to Happiness. So A Lazy Way to Happiness, that came about, I was working on a beat and it was just really off kilter and fucking weird. Um, reminds me a bit of something what Mike Skinner would do from the streets. But the lyrics were inspired by a conversation I had with a friend of mine. We was uh, we was out one night and we were talking about how some people spend their whole life just like striving to reach this pinnacle moment of euphoria um, and they meditate their whole life to get to it. But um, you, get, you can just like go out and like do a load of drugs and do it in an hour. Um, so that was kind of where that was. So that was like a lazy way to happiness. That was my whole thought process behind uh, writing that track. So fuckers were getting sniffed up and gambling in Vegas. I dabbed five taps and got lost in the lights. A lot of the samples on the album, I take them from little clips from like video recordings from my phone. So the the intro to it is, it's one of my mates calling another one of my mates a fucking bull cunt. You fucking bull cunt. <laughs> and then the bridge for it was uh, someone chasing someone else around the field. What's on your legs? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it just kind of like strung the pieces together. Offended by your criticism, even if it's constructive, recreating art due to nitpicking until you've lost your way and fucked it. I don't take these compliments well either. I feel I'm being patron. I recorded the original vocal take when I made the beat and it was pretty rough, ready and, uh, and, pr and pretty raw. I went back to uh, Twisted Roots and re-recorded it, but it was a bit shit. It was a bit too polished. So I actually kept the, um, I kept the original one. Uh, the one and I even like make a few like mistakes of how I pronounce words but I think it just adds to the fucking element of how off kilter and, and, and a bit fucking rugged the uh the track is really and over time as I try to memorize the taste of a divine fine wine but my memory cannot recall taste it craves a chase of a sense of these taste buds can't make Mr. Wendell. Mr. Wendell. Mr. Wendell was initially just a sample. It's co-produced by Twisted Roots, and he gave me the uh, the sample loop uh, at the beginning. One, two. Yeah. So Mr. Wendell was uh, inspired by Kendrick Lamar's "To Pimp a Butterfly." On there, he's got a lot of like where the the track kind of changes. Uh, so Mr. Wendell is a three-part track. So it's one track, but three parts all different parts. First part is about the dad of the family climbing his career, 
who uh, neglects the rest of the family, forgets about them. Climb the ladder of success, left your family beneath you. Like, fuck your big salary. They want you, they need you. The second part is about the girl and how she's uh, basically going around. She's acting like a bit of a slut. Do you know what I mean? She's, um, yeah, just putting it out a bit, really. Third verse is about the mum. And because the dad's obviously not paying any attention at home, um, she's shagging someone else. Um, she's on the piss all the time. See, mummy's on the bottle. She tried to balance life, lost her balance, and she toppled. Daddy doesn't love her. I never see him hug her. His attitude is fucker. He doesn't want to fuck her. It's about a British family falling apart, basically. Do you know what I mean? Fucking the career climber. Daughter's fucking off the rails, and mum's a fucking alcoholic. Yeah. Um, ain't no better roses, mate. Another day in paradise. Scabby septum, got you talking out your rectum about these family issues like your Gary Glitter steps. So another day in paradise is basically the uh, uh, me going in a depression and out of depression. First verse is uh, being fucking really miserable and uh, realizing that you're depressed. Your veneer smile is ugly, my gold one's no better. Full smiles, real feelings, dialogues of sad letters. Second verse is then talking about how the rest of the world is, is kind of depressed. I've got Benji on the hook on that one. I've got Anton doing some fucking killer saxophone on it. You can actually watch me do a full production breakdown of Another Day in Paradise. So I'm not going to sit here and uh, spend too long chatting about it. If you want to watch it, you can go down to the fucking description thing below. And um, yeah, go and watch it. Slow. Slow is nihilistic in a word. Uh, Twisted Roots basically fucking had this uh, this loop chopped up for me. So I just added a few drum fills, kept it very simple, kind of like the whole thing, what Griselda and Westside Gun and all that, what they're all doing, just kept it very simple, minimal drums. The explosion of Silk Road, fake MD from China. Smut smears my pages and undignifies vaginas. It's very, very nihilistic. I'm kind of talking about corruption and yeah, a bit dystopian, I'd say. Dystopian, nihilistic. Our papers used us when we're deforest into blasted quick. We reproduce like rabbits and give birth to these bastard kids. Yeah, that video I actually put together myself, just chopped up like a fucking load of clips off of YouTube. And uh, it's me fucking doing the performance shots in my bedroom. And that's pretty much it for uh, for slow. End of side one. So this is where if you're listening on vinyl, you need to turn it over because um, there is still more to come. So if you're on the fence about buying a vinyl, just hit the subscribe button because that will help and it goes a long way. It really does. Um, so yeah, even just, uh, viewing this much of the video, um, helps. So love and gratitude, but buy a record. It helped feed my kids. <laughs> Real happiness. So real happiness, when I was, uh, around the time I made real happiness, I was reading, uh, Prisoners of Geography by, um, uh, what was the guy's name? I can't remember. I was reading Prisoners of Geography by someone and Paul Mason's Post-Capitalism. So it's kind of like, if you listen to my lyrics, if you've read either of them and you've listened to Real Happiness, you kind of get what I was going for with my verse. So the intro was kind of spawned from that. So I got like some fucking 1950s, is it 50s? Whenever the Cold War was. When was the Cold War? Yeah, it was a while back. So yeah, whenever the Cold War was on, um, I got like one of them old like pro American propaganda fucking videos talking about how they hate communism. If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. Then my verse, yeah, it's uh, talking about climate change and forest fires. Forest fires, small but you're respiring is dire. The sound of it is really industrial. Like it's just the fucking harsh 
beat as well and i think that's where the sam the the hook the sample and the hook really complements the the industrial and fucking concreteness of the horrible synthy bass line it's just fucking in your face with the novels by these visionaries see perspective from our histories utopian chasers too cynical to spot any of their victories and the second verse was uh eloquently done by by roscoe roscoe features on that one um pretty much just fucking follows on from where i left off um yeah i would like to watch a triple threat uh ladder and chairs match with uh with ed Miliband and whoever else he said fucking he was in a fight with who else was in the fight Ed Miliband and who? They're your bars. <laughs> yeah. I'd just like to see fucking Ed Miliband in a wrestling match, to be fair. Piers Morgan in the triple threat ladders and chairs match with Ed Miliband. The government. Did you ever watch the fucking the video of him when he done the um when he was doing the death metal thing? It was fucking brilliant. Have you seen that? Have you not seen Ed Miliband trying to do the death metal scream? You know like when they fucking they do that. I'm gonna fucking put it in the video. You, you do it once more, and then I'm gonna do it. This is right. You're all right. Oh, I got a, a juicy little feature at the end of uh, at the end of Real Happiness as well. Well, I want a juicy feature. I just nicked a fucking sample from Charlie's Manson. Got these people over here that want to live. You want to live? Get in line. We'll live. You don't want to live? Hurry up. <laughs> you know the gates open. You know, do your thing, man. Here, give them some coke. All Charlie's friends get free coke. Give them coke. So yeah, I got a. Uh, I used the sample from Charles Manson at the end. Uh, he he compliments both verses by talking about humanity's destructive behaviours. Um, Charles Manson. I don't know. You listen to some of his interviews. You can see how he hooked so many people in. Man, he's uh, he wasn't fucking stupid. He wasn't fucking stupid. Far from it. Um, he actually makes a lot of sense. Um, not that I'm gonna go and kill anyone but yeah you know what i mean Dear Summer is a little bit like Mr. Wendell, um, where it's split into three parts. So originally it was only written as, I wrote it on a beach in Weymouth in the height of a British summer. Uh, I was looking around um, lots of unhealthy habits, lots of unhealthy people. Um, to be politically correct. British seaside resorts, sunburnt vest lines and shorts. Patriotism tells immigrants to get back to the port. Oh, fuck off. Sunburnt know-it-all with cartoon tattoos trying to make his country great with his extremist right views. So yeah, it started with that and uh, it gave, then from that I kind of went down the route of the, our consumption. We just fucking consume, consume. Like, you see how many, how much fucking frozen car feed they was getting through? Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like ice cream everywhere. Like, that's like some mass scale like fucking dairy farming, do you know what I mean? The, the, all those fish and chip shops and just the fucking shit that gets thrown away and like all, all, the, all the crap that they eat like do you know what I mean smoking on the beach drinking do you know what I mean it's just yeah um, all the all the plastic toys like do you mean the inflatables all that shit it's just fucking mass consumption of shit fat fucks divulging and frozen cat feed the merry go round still lost in the same spot as last week so, so the second verse around that time I think is uh, what's it Martin some uh, Rise of the Robots the book is so I was reading that and so the second part, it kind of like drops down into then and he's talking about um, how robots and AI are going to take all of our jobs. So I kind of go down that and how factory lines are fucking going to be finished, all that. Nationalism. Please stay. Factories full of unpurchased shit. No employment line. Employment's now an urban... Last part, it's like, boom, we're going on for another, uh, another flood. Um, yeah, so when the summer melts the ice, it reveals our ash. Um, we've been there before. We fucked it before. Uh, History repeats, just throwing that in there, like, do you know what I mean? A bit of, um, a bit of Graham Hancock. Final depression, the days are blast, and we flooded the globe because of green class. No tickets for the art when it's worthless cash. The shrinks wet dream. Modern day poetry, emotions and lyrics, a painter with a voice, fuck if they hear it. Um, the shrinks wet dream is one of my favourites, yeah, it's one of my favourite tracks, man. It's, um, I actually played that live once and a girl came up to me afterwards and she was talking to me about the track and she was like, your thought process just reminds me so much of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, she really liked the track, but um, I don't know if it was a compliment or not, <laughs> to be fair, but <laughs> I'll I take it. Um, but yeah, it was. I, I, when I wrote that track, I was fucking really depressed. I was in a, uh, I was in a state of depression and I was one of them ones where it's like, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? So at the end of the track, I talk about... Um, 
I go into like a little skit and I'm talking about um, what's the point of Christmas? What's the point of weddings? What's the point of all these rituals? What's, what's the fucking point? Like, do you mean? This, this is the, the, the pointless. I feel disconnected from the human race as I watch them carry on their rituals. And I think um, if you're in a state of depression that much, you kind of, uh, you get detached from human values. Um, so no, I don't necessarily think that um, all those things are irrelevant. Um, I actually think community spirit, um, people coming together, are, are really needed, but you can get pretty low and fucking disregard that straight away. Analyze the shrink had a wet ring, patterns of people digging holes with some cat fiends. ID crisis, Bruce Wayne and Bruce Jenner rising a fruit cake. I remember watching a um a Jordan Peterson talk, and he was talking about the Columbine High shooters, and something that really struck me with that. And he said, if you do not think that you are capable of committing one of these really bad atrocities, then you really don't know yourself. And what he was saying, and I, it's right. If you, if, if you get a certain uh, chain of events that just fucking happen to fall in the right pattern or the wrong pattern, um, yeah, you're capable of some fucking really dark stuff. So yeah, depression, man, like look after your head. Trust me, it's, um, yeah, depression ain't a joke, man. Look after yourself. We're just children. Eagles, river, material, living as a fragile heart gets snapped and smitten. Fingers point, we look for villains, goodies and baddies, they always be fit. So We're Just Children is was upcycled. Around 2013, uh, we were working with a girl called Kezia and she did a song called Broken. And I basically just pitched that down, the track that I produced with her. And that was where the hook come from. It. I don't want to just keep on living on. My vocals are all about, um, they're based on an interview that I watched with Michio Kaku. Uh, Michio Kaku is a future physicist, if you don't know who he is. And he talks about the Kardashev scale. Why do we do this? Life's like Lord of the Flies, so ruthless. A planet full of kids running around so clueless. And he told me a question could never be stupid. It's, it's based on the types of civilizations of, of, uh, of a species. So humans are a type zero civilization. Uh, we're on the verge of becoming a type one civilization if we don't kill ourselves before we get there. Um, I'm not going to go into the uh, into what fucking each uh, each type is. You can go and look at that yourself. That's not that's not what this video is about. This video is about my album. Um, go and buy it. Um, so yeah, um, that was where it come from. It's basically saying as as a, as a species, as a human race, we're just children, man. We're not. Uh, we've got all this technology, but we're not we're, we're not advanced. We we still live off fossil fuels. Do you know what I mean? We've got the kind of the capability to take it to the next step, but we're still infants, man. Like we do some fucking stupid shit. Don't weep what fits on you, lad. Brings in a cat from a uni slack, and I'm in my thirties. Tracks you wearing, lifestyle's dirty. The sample at the end of We're Just Children is uh, Matthew McConaughey's character Russ Cole um, in True Detective. And he's a real pessimistic guy, man. Um, quite philosophical, but very pessimistic. And his, on the album version, he, it rounds it off nicely. Like his his speech on that, it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty nihilistic, man. I think human consciousness is a tragic misstep in evolution. We became too self-aware. George Orwell. George Orwell. So George Orwell um, was the only track on the album that isn't produced by me. That was uh, produced by Roscoe. I think I made this really well. So George Orwell, um, it came about um, the hook I writ initially. So it was, uh, I think I'm big, Meech, Larry Hoover. There was that. And then I think Skepta did one as well. Then he did, I think I'm Tupac, Biggie Smalls, something like that. See, then my one was. I think I'm George Orwell, Jesus Christ, coming up for air, resurrected twice. So coming up for air, that's a George Orwell book called Coming Up for Air, and then obviously Jesus was re resurrected. Well, fucking, I'm not gonna explain the lines, man. Listen. Masquerading in a holiday by Haven, concentration camps, prison guards parading, red coats, and simplistic entertainment. Shelley's so fragrant, nomadic sense of a vagrant. George Orwell is, um, it's just dystopian as fuck. Um, I think it rounds the album off um, nicely. It's this, yeah, it was the perfect track to finish it. End of side two. 
you can only get the full album on on vinyl or on CD. I'm not loading the full album up to the streaming sites. There will be an EP version of it available, which is five of the tracks. But to get the full 10 tracks, you're going to need to get the vinyl or the CD. And once they're gone, they're gone. Um, I think it just kind of like adds to art. And I think the people that would, that care about albums, the, this that's what it's meant for anyway. It, it wasn't it wasn't meant for, for the streaming sites. Um, it's not meant for, for, like I said, it's not meant for you to, uh, to swipe, 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 swipe. Skip, 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 skip. Um, and if you're still watching this video, um, you're obviously not a skipper because uh, statistics show that it's fucking, you would have been gone under the first minute um, onto the next thing. Anything else? Um, I'll maybe hold it up. Hold you did hold it up. Yeah, but Talk about it, I just fucking spent yeah, like an hour talking about it. Yeah, it is. Here it is. It's, uh, it is. Talk, maybe talk about the oh, the artwork. Oh, you, you yeah, you want to know about So, the artwork, right? It's got an interesting story about the artwork. So, that picture there was taken in the RUH um, before I got admitted to a decompression chamber with the Benz. So, I went to Portland, right, to <laughs> fucking scuba diving, had a scuba diving accident, shot up to the fucking top from 18 meters after being down for about a half hour, and uh, I felt all right, obviously couldn't go back down, got home in the evening, and fucking started having like real crippling pains and was bending over, so rang around a load of people, they didn't know what was going on. Long story short, I was fucking sent it in an ambulance down from Bath, all the way back down to Paul, they put me in a decompression chamber for God knows how many hours on end through the night, um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't a very nice experience, but it's fucking, yeah. If anyone wants to know more about my experience in the decompression chamber, put a comment below and I'll fucking, yeah, I'll go into the detail if you're into that sort of stuff. But yeah, that is where that beautiful mugshot come from. There was a selfie in the hospital with the bends. Yeah.